It's an amazing experience just to sail through, seeing all the big beautiful icebergs and the whales. It's quite a spectacular experience. Off the tip of the Antarctic Peninsula, you'll find the Danger Islands. This frigid archipelago is home to more than half the world's penguins. All of your senses are sort of heightened when you're out there. The noise, the smell, the sights is, is just incredible. Seasoned expeditioner Dr Megan Dewar led a multinational surveillance mission here in March. We found an unusual mortality event in um, a daily penguins. which we estimate to be around at least two to 3,000 healthy adults and a daily penguin chicks. Test results are yet to confirm what disease killed those penguins. But nearby, they also found dozens more dead birds called skewers. Quite devastating. Every couple of metres, you're, you're finding another dead bird. After testing skewer tissue samples, they confirmed the worst the deadly new strain of bird flu had reached Antarctica, the world's most remote continent. We're sort of in uncharted territory, in a sense, of, of this. It's sort of the first time this has happened, but it was something that, yeah, we predicted. It's incredible that the virus was able to travel that far with birds. Virus ecologist Dr Michelle Villay has been tracking bird flu for years. So what's your theory for how it got from South America into Antarctica? We think they're actually two separate introduction events, one from South America to the Falklands, one from South America to South Georgia. And then as the season progressed, we started seeing kind of more and more cases coming down towards the Antarctic Peninsula. And the hypothesis is that it probably arrived with these birds called skuas, which are kind of like big brown seagulls. How long do you think it'll take to spread across the entire of Antarctica? I think that's something we definitely don't know the answer to. The most well-known strain of bird flu, H5N1, is incredibly contagious. The first major outbreak was in Hong Kong in the 1990s. Those with flu symptoms anxious to rule out bird flu, which has so far taken four lives. The pathogen moved slowly across Asia before spreading to Europe. This is the harsh reality of a mass cull in the face of bird flu. It hit Africa and then the Americas. The virus mutated again a few years ago, becoming even more deadly. That strain's killed tens of millions of animals and jumped species. South America has been, I would argue, a complete disaster, what's happened there. In Peru, at least 40% of the Peruvian pelicans there have died. Um, we're seeing more than 10% of the South American sea lions in South America have died, and that's, that's across the whole continent. The list kind of goes on. Is this the worst ecological disaster we've faced in recent history? Yes, I would argue yes, um, and particularly if we think about it in the context of an infectious disease. Australia is now the only continent still free of the new mutated H5N1 variant. In Geelong, the Centre for Disease Preparedness is a world leader in zoonotic agents, viruses that can jump from animals to humans. Okay, so this is the virus growing in the monolith. Scientists here are preparing for an avian outbreak as an inevitability. Hey, Frank. Welcome through. Thank you. Come this way. Thank you very much. We're going deep into the belly of the building where a high biocontainment facility houses some of the world's deadliest known diseases. These ones are virus, these ones are negative. Only 28 people have contracted this variant of bird flu so far and none have died. All of those cases were from infected animals. In this lab, they're growing the virus, researching how a vaccine might work if it started to spread between humans. It's almost a question that no one wants to ask, but is there any way that this could get as bad as COVID-19 did? Currently, the virus is still very much restricted uh, from being able to transmit uh, between person to, to person. So 
um, I guess like hopefully it doesn't pick up that trait to be easily transmissible between humans. Yeah, so the current situation, there's been evidence of some spillback from infected dairy farms back into wild birds. Federal authorities are watching international developments with caution after a recent outbreak in dairy cattle in the US. So we need to prepare for animals beyond poultry, so both uh, marine mammals as well as potentially some livestock species being infected. So we need to broaden our um, preparedness plans beyond poultry, which is what we're used to responding to previously. At the moment, you know, everybody knows it's, it's a risk. Everybody's doing their biosecurity. Everybody's locking their gates. <laughs> Australia's poultry farms are considered most at risk. I'm told biosecurity has never been tighter. So there's three or four chicken farms in here. You can smell well. He's got one, two, three, four, he's probably got six sheds there. So can we get on that farm to have a look? Uh, no, and the reason for that is very simple. Um, you and I are out here on the street, there's germs on the street, there's germs on our feet. We've got germs in our mouth and our throats and our noses that those chickens have never seen before. Despite all precautions, industry rep and veterinarian Dr Joanne Sillens says the greatest threat to poultry isn't people, but wild birds. That's what drove an outbreak in the US where 92 million chickens and turkeys have died or been destroyed. Are you looking at that and thinking, oh my goodness, this could happen here? We really don't know which gene set we're going to get because this virus just keeps mixing and matching its genes. To coin a phrase, alert but not alarmed. And plenty of you know, planning and sorting things out going on in case. This virus has traveled huge distances. It's crossed the Atlantic Ocean, it's crossed the Pacific Ocean. If South Asia is not far either, and we know this virus is there. So I think it's certainly just a matter of when. Spring has been identified as Australia's highest risk period when migrating birds return from Europe. Lots of silver gulls here today. What it'll mean for our unique and endangered wildlife is a matter of speculation. You can hear some cockatoos. The most likely is that it will happen the same as what's happened elsewhere. We're going to see the virus spread right across the country, affecting wild birds as it goes, causing mass mortalities. Admitting an outbreak is unavoidable doesn't mean the outlook is hopeless. The key to controlling what's to come is constant surveillance. We've potentially got a better chance in Australia, but yeah, I do think it's coming. <laughs>